Hey, uh, thanks everyone for coming. And thank you to Speak Up for Women for bringing me here. It wasn't that easy. <laughs> but I made it. Um, I mean, and thank you to all the other speakers. You guys have said so much that I agree with and you know a lot of what's included in my talk. So hopefully I'm not repeating too much. But um, for a long time, I did insist that feminism meant something, um, that one could not just go around calling themselves feminist while advocating decidedly unfeminist things, um, unfeminist ideas and practices, like the idea that prostitution is empowering for women, uh, that violent sex is liberatory, and also potentially empowering for women who choose to be choked in bed or perform other pornographic fantasies for their partners. Um, the idea that self-objectification is a harmless thing and not something that's tied to the fact that women learn their sexual desirability and fuckability is their primary value in society and what makes them relevant and worthy of attention. And of course, the concept of gender identity. That is the idea that what makes a woman is her or apparently his um, identification with the stereotypes attached to femininity. Modern feminism seems to me to be the very opposite of what women fought for for decades, almost a literal reversal today. We no longer need rights, those are just for uh, bougie white feminists. We must embrace sexist gender stereotypes as innate and an expression of our true selves. And commodifying and objectifying our bodies is the way that women gain status and respect in society. And because according to modern identity politics, anything anyone experiences, feels, or claims must be accepted and taken at face value, none of this can be challenged because of course critical thought is shaming and phobia or literal violence. And it's not just feminism that's been affected. The left itself has totally lost sight of its goals and foundations as well. Um, and instead of being focused on uplifting and empowering the working class, uh, addressing corporate power and the vast and inhumane gap between rich and poor, it has, in the West at least, turned its focus to virtue signaling and call-out culture, to ensuring that one's Twitter followers and Facebook friends are convinced of one's virtue and political purity, um, and that we purge those who fail to toe the modern party line from our midst. These self-identified leftists frame themselves as courageous and radical for defending their cult from independent thinkers, but they are anything but. Rather than stand up for the truth, free speech, respectful civil debate, and against violence, threats, abuse, and harassment, they aim only to protect their social circles, their political positions, or their jobs in various unions, political parties, institutions, and NGOs. They fear others just like them, perpetuating a cycle that ensures no one can escape. That no one can tell the truth or ask questions that might challenge accepted mantras. And indeed, the left and much of feminism has replaced critical thought and a quest for the truth with mantras. One of the signs of a cult, I hope this doesn't make me sound like a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> is that there's a process of indoctrination or education that manifests itself as coercive persuasion or thought reform, also known as brainwashing. The culmination of this process is that group members no longer act in their own interest, but in the interest of the group or its leader. And while, of course, I do believe that as members of a society, we should be acting in the interests of the whole, not only of ourselves, it also seems clear that in particular contexts, this is harmful, especially in this case, as women have begun to advocate against themselves and against their own interests as a result of this brainwashing process. Wherein a few men's feelings and desires are prioritized over all women's safety and rights. 
So this whole thing does really creep me out. Uh, and I see the comparison to cultishness as apt and disturbing. Um, I think we need to make sure that while we criticize trans activism for this behavior, we also be careful not to replicate it ourselves in feminism and in other political movements, as well as in our lives generally. Um, it's really easy to point the finger elsewhere instead of at ourselves, but we, we also need to look critically at our own movements. Um, what also seems clear to me today is that we as a society hate people who tell the truth, which is unfortunate because I'm a fan of telling the truth. And apparently that means that I am protested and smeared and threatened all the time, every time I speak, by supposed progressives and feminists. Um, no matter how clear I am, I mean, I feel like I repeat myself over and over and over, it doesn't matter, um, the smears are endless. I complain about Canadian media a lot because Canadian media is awful. Um, so this is just one example, but there's like countless examples. I mean, if I was wealthy, I would just be suing people constantly for libel, which would be a massive waste of my time, but it really gets uh, irritating after a while, <laughs> to say the least. Um, a couple of weeks ago, the Globe and Mail, which is one of Canada's most prominent mainstream papers, printed that I target sex workers, that I'm known for diatribes against trans people, and that I've referred to trans women's genitalia with rude slang. None of this is true, not in the slightest, not by any stretch of the imagination. And when I contacted them to pitch an op-ed speaking for myself, um, explaining my own perspective, noting that I should at very least be allowed the right to reply when a publication prevent, pr prints overt libel about me, the opinion editor suggested I try to publish in the letters section, <laughs> which is really insulting. Um, and you know, like as though it's reasonable to relegate me to under 200 words or less to defend myself and women's rights in response to thousands of words insulting and lying about me. That I wouldn't be allowed the space to articulate what so many women are desperately trying to get across with regard to gender identity legislation and its impact on women and girls in a paper I've written for in the past is insulting and unacceptable. It's not like I'm some unknown writer to them. Um, and yeah, this has been standard in Canadian media and it's shameful. They're more than willing to smear and vilify me and other women like me. Um, but they won't let me speak for myself. Often they won't even contact me for comment. <clears throat> so, seeing as Canadian media refuses to do their jobs and cover this debate fairly, I will do it here and anywhere else I can. Um, so I do like to make some things clear when I do these talks, just so, uh, I mean, supposedly so that people won't misrepresent me, but it doesn't work all the time. Um, when I say sex, I'm referring to biology whether an individual is male or female. I define a man as an adult male human and a woman as an adult female human. When I say gender, uh, what I mean is the stereotypes and the social roles imposed on males and females based on their sex. So this is what I mean when I talk about femininity and masculinity. The ideas we hold in our society about what men and women should be, what social norms we're expected to adhere to, how we should dress, how we should act, what we should like, what kinds of jobs we should have, what our personality traits should consist of, etc. When I say trans activist, I'm not specifically or necessarily talking about trans identified people. Trans identified people aren't a monolith in terms of their political views. Um, what I'm talking about is, you know, any person who promotes and supports gender identity ideology and legislation. And when I say gender identity ideology or transgender ideology, I'm referring to the idea that it's possible for a person to be born in the wrong body. It's not, you're just born with your body and too bad. For some of us. <laughs> um, or that it's possible for a person to change sex. 
When I talk about gender identity legislation, I'm referring to legislation and policies that allow people to self-identify as any sex they like and to access facilities, spaces, political positions, shelters, jobs, grants, universities, sports competitions, et cetera, on that basis. I am not anti-trans people. I'm pro-reality. I'm pro-women's safety. And I'm anti an ideology that insists women don't exist and don't matter. I'm also not a biological essentialist. Uh, that gets thrown around a lot at feminists like me who are opposed to gender identity ideology. Um, but actually, biological essentialism is the idea that an individual's personality is an innate or natural essence and that this is directly attached to their sex. So I believe that females and males can have all kinds of personalities. Uh, I think that boys and girls should be allowed to play with whichever toys they like and wear whatever clothes they want, regardless of whether or not those clothes and toys are designated for boys or for girls. I don't believe that all females are inherently passive and irrational and emotional and drawn to makeup and stilettos. I don't believe that all males are inherently unemotional, unempathetic and aggressive and drawn to sports and trucks. I want people to be free to be themselves and to live their lives in ways that feel fulfilling and authentic to them. I don't believe any person should be discriminated against or harassed because they step outside the gender stereotypes laid out for us and enforced on us in so many ways. And as a feminist, I think we should encourage people to step outside of those gender roles. I have not as the media has reported said that trans people should not have rights or that they're dangerous. I have not suggested that trans people be excluded from spaces generally. I'm actually really not very interested in whether or not people identify as trans. It has no bearing on my arguments. Transgenderism means nothing to me. That word itself has no uh, concrete definition. It's totally unclear, it's totally vague. It's certainly too vague a concept to base policy or rights on. As per gender identity ideology itself, Trans only exists through self-declaration and cannot be measured or determined by any outside party. I have no idea how we can even have a conversation about something that is undefinable, never mind create legislation surrounding that idea, but here we are. So yeah, I'm not interested in trans identity. I'm only interested in who is male and who is female. And I don't believe that males should have access to spaces wherein women and girls are vulnerable. <laughs> Even if those males identify as trans. Um, I'm also not interested in keeping females who identify as trans out of any spaces. So that is to say this transphobia accusation is a complete and intentional, I think, misnomer. So it's a way to pretend that we're not talking about what we're actually talking about, which is mostly women's rights. It's always refocused back on this trans identity thing, which again means nothing. Um, I've also not, as so many have claimed, wished violence on anyone. I have never encouraged violence. I oppose all violence. Uh, I've never engaged in hate speech. I do hate that I have to say this and that I have to continue to defend myself against totally insane lies. Um, I've not said that trans women are not real women. I don't use the term real women. Either you're a woman or you're not a woman. It's not complicated. <laughs> what I have said is that males who identify as trans are male. Uh, this isn't a judgment or an insult. It's not an opinion. It's a material reality, a biological reality. If you're born male, you remain male for life. Sorry if you don't like that. <laughs> That's okay, it's okay, it's okay to be male. Um, <laughs> you can't help it. Uh, <laughs> everyone knows this, again, it's not a belief or an opinion, it's a fact. 
And also to be clear, this should not preclude men from wearing clothing designated for women if they want to. It's a lot more uncomfortable, but go for it. It doesn't have to be. I didn't get my suitcase, so this is all I have. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, if you want to grow your hair long, even if you want to get uh, plastic surgery, um, I'm not going to stop you. I think that these surgeries are really, uh, they should be considered pretty seriously. I mean, you're altering your body for life. They can be dangerous. They're still surgeries. These hormones that trans people are taking are dangerous. They increase your risk for cancer, among other things. But go for it. Um, being male should also not preclude you from pushing back against the sexist stereotypes attached to masculinity. As a feminist, I fully support people pushing back against those stereotypes. Um, I've also not said, these are all quotes from Canadian media and they're quotes that they print over and over and over again. I've not said that trans women shouldn't be allowed to compete in sporting events sporting events against non-trans women. This is a quote. What I have said is that female athletes should not be made to compete with or against male athletes. This is because female bodies are different than male bodies. <laughs> Males are generally bigger than females. They have more muscle mass, longer limbs, bigger bones, bigger organs, and are on average taller. Uh, their pelvises, their spines, their feet are different. They move their bodies differently. This all has a notable impact on athletic ability, among many other things. And this is why men and women compete separately in sport. Even if a male athlete reduces his testosterone, it doesn't undo puberty and it doesn't alter their body in a significant enough way to rid them of the advantage they have over women physically. The mere fact that Canadian media is now referring to women as non-trans should reveal exactly how regressive this ideology is. Historically, women have been positioned as lesser versions of men and existing in comparison to men, men being the norm. Even today, the world continues to be built to male standards as, uh, you know, office temperatures are set for male bodies, which is why we're always cold at the office and wearing sweaters in the middle of July. Uh, women are more likely to be injured or to die in car crashes because cars are built for male bodies. Um, women die from heart attacks more often than men because heart attack symptoms show up in different ways for women. And we assume the universal symptoms of heart attacks are those experienced by males. The list goes on and on. Yet today, in 2019, the trans movement has determined that there are not women and men, but males and non-males, essentially defining women right out of the picture. The entire language of the oh-so-progressive trans activist movement has taken up the erasure of women in order to accommodate a tiny minority of people who would like us all to pretend material reality doesn't exist. We are no longer women, but cis women, which means supposedly we are women who identify with the gender assigned to us at birth. This is insulting. I'm not a woman because I identify with femininity. I don't identify with all of the stereotypes imposed on me in a patriarchal society. I am not passive or irrational or over emotional. I'm not a woman because I wear makeup or high heels. If I were standing here in a suit and I shaved my head and I started playing football, I'd still be a woman. I did not emerge from the womb in a skirt. At no point in my life have I identified with every single one of those stereotypes. I did not, as a child, prefer dresses to pants or dolls to truck. And in fact, I very much wanted to be like the boys when I was a kid and rejected pink and frilly dresses and ballet. Uh, it didn't make me a boy. And, you know, while surely there are plenty of feminine stereotypes that do apply to me, I'm not at all binary. 
when it comes to gender. None of us are. I'm more complex than that. Labeling women cis defines us only based on gender stereotypes, something feminists have been fighting from the get-go. What is incredibly ironic about this debate and the way feminists who challenge transgender ideology are positioned is that feminists are the one who have always argued against the gender binary. We want people to be free to be themselves and not feel pressured to adopt masculine or feminine stereotypes. Yet we are the ones in this debate who are accused of being conservative or regressive or not allowing people to be who they really are. This coming from people who say that any boy who loves frilly pink dresses must really be a girl and a girl who doesn't want to wear dresses or be sexualized must actually be a boy. Um, I was protested for, by like, I don't know, 500 people last month <laughs> when speaking about all this at the Toronto Public Library in Canada. Um, I had to be escorted to the venue by bodyguards and there was a massive police presence um, who were there to protect me and the attendees. Those protesters hurled insults at the attendees. They screamed at them as they left the venue. It was really scary. Uh, primarily, those attendees were women. And uh, the protesters said things like, fuck you, turf bitch. Uh, they chanted shame at these people who simply wanted to have a conversation about policies and legislation that have a massive impact on half of the population. At our recent event in Vancouver, looking at the issue of media bias in the gender identity debate, protesters showed up with a cardboard guillotine with the words turf swerfs step right up written on it. I and other women like me are threatened with violence and death simply for speaking about entirely reasonable concerns like, for example, men being transferred to female prisons where they go on to assault and sexually harass the women in those prisons. And leftists are not just standing by and doing nothing, they're encouraging it. And they're encouraging it by pretending that we are the dangerous, violent, bigoted, fascist ones. And of course, the opposite is true. Bigotry, People love this word, but they don't seem to have any idea what it means. <laughs> Bigotry means intolerance towards those who hold different opinions from oneself. Bigotry is an obstinate or intolerant devotion to one's own opinions and prejudices. It is someone who regards or treats members of a group with hatred or intolerance. Fascism is characterized generally by dictatorial power and forcible suppression of opposition. <laughs> it seems pretty clear to me who is doing that. I don't recall any feminist actually trying to shut down a trans event or no platform a trans person. I certainly haven't engaged in anything like that. Um, Hitler, sorry. <laughs> I know that's a cliche, but <laughs> now we get to Hitler. Uh, Hitler proliferated lies about and dehumanized Jewish people in order to justify abuse and genocide. Um, the Nazis used propaganda to spread anti-Semitism, quell dissent, and turn people against one another. German newspapers printed cartoons and ads depicting anti-Semitic images and messages similar to those you might see online today about so-called TERFs. If you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it, was Hitler's guiding mantra. He trusted that people wouldn't think for themselves and would simply act out of fear or intellectual laziness, jumping on bandwagons without questioning their purpose and foundation. The Holocaust was successful in part because the public went along with it, because individuals believed the myths and lies proliferated by the Nazis, because they didn't stand up, think critically, or push back.
I think it's good to remember what fascism actually is and who the bigots really are in this debate as our detractors are engaged in a massive smear campaign that endangers and dehumanizes women and too many people are going along with it without investigating for themselves and that scares me. Uh, journalist and author Chris Hedges said, I do not fight fascists because I will win. I fight fascists because they are fascists. And I implore you to take that same message to the fight against gender identity legislation and towards women's rights. And I actually do think that we can win pretty easily. Um, if everyone who believed that what's happening right now is wrong, that men should not be allowed access to women's shelters, transition houses, and change rooms, that it's not possible to change sex ever, never mind through announcement, that it's a lie to say that men can become pregnant and that a penis is female, if all of those people spoke up, this fight would be over because the majority of us know and understand these basic facts, but too many are too afraid to say so. I fight this fight because it's the right thing to do. It's not because it's lucrative or personally beneficial to me. My life would be a lot easier if I said nothing. But I refuse to lie and I couldn't live with myself if I sat back and watched all that my foremothers fought for be destroyed within only a matter of years because it was inconvenient for me to speak up. I have lost friends, I do feel afraid, I feel stressed, I feel hurt, I feel angry at the way I've been treated by the media and people that I know around me. You're not the only ones who feel that way. I worry about my ability to continue to make a living. I worry about violence, but I'm not gonna lie. And I'm not gonna remain silent in the face of something I view as a threat to women and girls, but also in the face of nonsense. I will not say that two plus two is five, or that a man is a woman. This is a dangerous path to go down. The one where we do as we're told and we repeat mantras dictated to us despite the fact that they make no sense. We desperately need to think for ourselves and cling to our right to speak our minds and speak the truth. It matters in this fight, but it also matters outside this fight. A society characterized by authoritarianism, the forcible suppression of opposition, propaganda, the demonization of dissidents, the practice of framing one's group as a victim in order to justify any behavior at all against the group's enemies, the idea that anything that impedes the project must be gotten rid of, often violently. These are all characteristics of a fascist society. And this is what I'm seeing being promoted by the trans activist movement and actually by leftists more broadly, and it's wrong. Um, I want to conclude by quoting the late, great Magdalene Burns, which I hope you all know, and if you don't, you should look her up. <laughs> who said, you might be worried about your job or your friends, but your rights are more important than anything else. She was right, and the time to fight is now before it's too late.